good afternoon everyone so welcome to this afternoon session the first speaker is manish shrimali from central university of rajasthan so he'll be talking on explosive death in coupled oscillators thank you sandhan and uh, uh, good afternoon everyone and i would like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to talk about some of the recent work uh, in the area of explosive death including uh, the the work done in my group at sentence to rajasthan ajmer and uh, i would like to uh, mention here that uh, this was done with my phd students and postdocs so umesh uh, varma amit and neeraj kamal they were involved in the six and our collaborators yurgan from postdoc and i would like to th acknowledge dst also for financial support so uh, what i will going to talk about today is uh, uh, a couple oscillators we had a, a interesting talk in the morning by shashi uh, about the the couple pendulums and camera states and all that so i'll just briefly go through the what are the the possible uh, emerging states from the couple oscillators because of the interaction and the two uh, the mostly i'll be talking about the separation of oscillations but synchronization is equally important phenomena which uh, people are talking about from last so many years and as my uh, concern is about the the explosive death which is the the sudden uh, transition in the the amplitude of the the couple oscillators i'll be talking in terms of phase transition point of view so we have to uh, uh, broadly this first and second order phase transitions and then uh, the different uh transitions uh because of the uh the change in the the coupling uh, form and all these things will us uh, as examples for the explosive death and then i'll conclude so before i going I, i'll i start i would like to mention here that uh this uh, the as i mentioned uh, this explosive death which is a so what we are talking about is a, the they are oscillators they they have a certain amplitude of oscillations and suddenly if the oscillations are suppressed uh, in the entire network so uh, this phenomena is uh, called as ex explosive death and uh, we'll discuss what are the the different coupling form where we can explore this kind of transitions so um, before uh, that we'll have uh, some uh, review of the couple oscillators uh, they are basically uh, studied for biological chemical physical systems for uh, different uh, interesting phenomena like synchronization and uh, especially the suppression of oscillations which is uh, one of uh, my interest and i'll be talking about that here so uh, as we all know that the synchronization is a the adjustment of the rhythm and uh, some of the the well known examples are the compel pendulum clapping of audience fireflies and so on then uh, the one of the, the the recent interest in the the uh, dynamics of coupled oscillators was the suppression of oscillations so here uh, broadly we can classify that into the two uh, classes one is the amplitude that which we say that the the because of the interaction if we can uh, stabilize the unstable steady state of the system so you have a oscillatory state and the 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 oscillator individual oscillators they have their own unstable steady state and somehow because of the the uh, particular coupling form if we can stabilize that steady state and then we can say that we can suppress the oscillations these suppression of oscillations are important in many uh, situations where this uh, oscillations are unwanted or not required so here what is happening is the after, even after the interaction the system is going to its own unstable equilibrium point so we say that system stabilizes to its own steady state which is otherwise unstable and classified as a amplitude death the another uh, similar phenomena which we say that the, it is oscillation death and here what we say that because of the interaction the new uh, stable uh, states are created and if they are the system is going to the newly created steady state which is uh, because of the, uh, the coupling dependent steady states we call that these are the oscillation death states so here again that these are the the coupling dependent states which are not the uh, the equilibrium uh, uh, points of the uncoupled oscillators 
this oscillation death state can further be classified in the homogeneous and inhomogeneous steady states depending upon the, the symmetry of the, the couple oscillators. Now, uh, as we know that uh, the, in the phase transition, which is a process is in, in which one or more properties of the system changes drastically after a minimal change in one of its control parameter, and broadly it can be classified into the two categories, first order and second order transitions. So first order transition, we have a coexistence of different phases in the proximity of the transition point of the control variable. And in the second order, it's called so-called the continuous phase transition. This is a reversible and correspond to the, to the order parameter displaying a continuous behavior near a criticality. So <clears throat> recently, in last uh, one decade, people started looking at the explosive percolation synchronization as, as well as in the, the suppression of oscillation states also. So the, the, ex, the explosive percolation was first discovered in 2009 which refers to the sudden formation of interconnected GAN cluster in a growing network whose size is comparable to that of the whole, net whole network. Similarly, explosive synchronization was also noticed in 2011 first by the abrupt emergence of the collective synchronized state in the couple operator. And it was reported that this is because of the, <coughs> the it was in the non-identical Kuramoto type oscillators, where there is a frequency and degree of oscillators are correlated. So it was uh, like when it was observed that uh, this explosive synchronization can ob basically can be studied in Kuramoto and or oscillator type system. Then in 2014, the uh, the one group by the Zhang and Zhou etc. In 2014, they tried to study the, can we have a similar kind of explosive transition in the suppression of oscillation state? So can we go from the, the, the oscillatory state to the, the steady state transition, which is kind of discontinuous? And so, uh, till now, all the uh, transition is studied from the, the oscillatory state to the non oscillatory state, or this transition, like amplitude death and the oscillation death they were reported as a continuous transition. <coughs> now, if you look at the, the here, I would like to uh, give you about the, the background that uh, why we are not able to get, in some cases, the, the, the discontinuous transition is because of the, this hop bifurcation. And then you can see that because of the, the this hop bifurcation system go from oscillatory state to the steady state, which is in the continuous transition, and then some cases there are pitchfork bifurcation, which uh, is splitting the, the the one state into the the pair of states. Now, if somehow we can advance this pitchfork bifurcation, and there is a there is a the coexistence of two states together in the parameters uh, sp uh, plane, then we can see that there are regions where the oscillatory states and the the the, the coupling dependent this homogeneous steady states are created and they are they are uh, existing together in that case there are chances that we can have a this kind of a explosive transition from oscillatory to steady state so this was the first example which was studied the Stuart lander oscillator you can see that here the this is the, the oscillator and you have a link term here you have a, the strength of the the, link, the frequency dependent you have a non-identical oscillators with the distribution of frequency, omega i, omega g, and then you have a coupling which is a, has a correlation with the frequency. And then you have a diffusive coupling like this. So here you can uh, define the order parameters r and r theta, and you can see that with the different kind of frequency distribution, you can have a transition from uh, unsynchronized to initially the synchronized oscillators, and then suddenly the, the amplitude, the, all the oscillators goes to the, the death state. So uh, with this, so when there, there was a study on the Kuramoto model, we thought of this will also suggest that this kind of transition can also happen where there is a, there is a, uh, evolve, uh, the uh, dynamical systems having an amplitude. X axis is coupling strength.
So uh, what we tried is, uh, we wanted to see whether uh, we can have a such kind of transition in the identical system. This, uh, the first report on the, the explosive death of the, the couple oscillators was on the non-identical oscillators. So we uh, look at the Van der Paul oscillators, identical oscillators, and with the coupling, which is uh, mean field coupling, and you have a K, which is a, the coupling co uh, constant, and Q is the, the density of the mean field, and the X bar is the, the average field. So what we did is, we defined the, the amplitude, the order parameter, which is uh, the, the normalized amplitude of the oscillator. And then we can say that if the normalized this amplitude of the oscillator is greater than zero, you are in the oscillated state. And if it is zero, you are in the, the suppressed oscillation or death state. So what we did is, we fixed the, the, the mean field intensity 0.5 and consider the 100 uh, identical oscillators and look at the amplitude and as a function of the coupling strength, you can see that uh, for one particular parameter of the, uh, the Van der Paul oscillator B equal to one, you see the continuous transition from oscillatory state to the, the, the steady state. And when you change the parameter, you can see that there is a the abrupt change in the state of the system. Here, uh, what we have done, done is that we have done the adiabatic calculation and the continuation diagram. You can see that the, the forward and backward transition points are different and showing the hysteresis in this uh, parameter space. And these are the, the time series. So uh, then we explored the, the entire parameter space. Uh, we have done the analytical also. So backward is uh, uh, in agreement with the analytical results. So, uh, what we did is, uh, the, the one of the control parameter of the, the Van der Paul oscillator B and the coupling strength K, we have uh, scanned the entire space and found that the, the, uh, this, the coupled oscillators, they are in the different uh, dynamical states. Here it is in the oscillator state. The here system goes to the amplitude depth, which is the, the state of the, the uncoupled Van der Paul oscillator. Here system is going to the homogeneous steady state, which is the newly created a steady state because of the interaction. And in this, this is a hysteresis region where you have a, this uh, coexistence of uh, the oscillatory and homogeneous state. So uh, yes, the, the point here after that, the, um, the system goes from the, the oscillatory to the homogeneous steady state. So uh, this is the, the one of the, the, the condition that uh, the system should have the, this, uh, coupling dependent homogeneous or inhomogeneous steady state in order to have an explosive transition. So we have also uh, studied uh, this parameter space with the, the, the mean field intensity Q and you can see that uh, as long as you keep the Q less than one, then only you are able to get this transition. And uh, for Q is equal to one, you don't have this transition to the suppressed oscillation state. So we have also done the analytical uh, study for this homogeneous steady state, which is a, so you can see that these are the solutions, X star and Y star. And when we uh, find out the condition for the stabilization of this homogeneous steady state, which matches very well with the, the backward transition point of the couple oscillators. Now, we have also explored that uh, this is for the limit cycle oscillator. We have also studied the, the another uh, the chaotic oscillator, which is the Lorentz system. We have considered the similar uh, the the coupling function here, and you can see that these are parameter setting for the the chaotic system. And Q we have considered between zero and one. And here also you can see that uh, if you look at the parameter space uh, for Q and the coupling strength, there is a transition from oscillate to steady state, uh, which is of the, uh, this uh, showing the discontinuous transition in the amplitude. And we have also calculated the Lyapunov exponent and the synchronization error. You can see that the first, the first the system goes to the synchronized state here, and then uh, there's a sudden jump to the, the, in the amplitude also, which is reflected in the synchronization error also. The system goes to the, uh, this point, first they are synchronized and then uh, uh, this homogeneous steady state is stabilized. 
So, uh, for the, the chaotic Lorentz system also, we have analytically calculated the, uh, the backward transition point, uh, which is again in the agreement with the, uh, this. So, here you can see that the, this, uh, uh, there is a transition from the, uh, the oscillatory to the, the steady state, and that depends upon the damping parameter. And uh, linear stability analysis uh, predicts uh, the backward transition point also. And uh, they are independent of the, these transitions are independent of the uh, system size. And now what we did is, because uh, this is the, uh, the, the identical oscillators studied with the mean field coupling, we have also explored the, what are the other uh, coupling uh, functions we can have or the network topology where we can um, see this kind of transitions. So as I mentioned that one of the, the important uh, region or feature for this kind of transition, we should have this, the, not the, uh, this uh, steady, not, we are not going to, the sta uh, going to, going to stabilize the, the, uh, the unstable uh, steady state of the individual oscillator, but we are going to stabilize the coupling dependent uh, steady state and there is a coexistence of oscillator and these states. And this can happen only when you have, you are somehow breaking the symmetry in the system. So that is the one of the, the, the observation that uh, in the coupling, if we can, so like here also uh, in the mean field also, we were breaking the symmetry by introducing the, the, the parameter Q. And now uh, what we have done is we have studied the environmentally coupled oscillators, like where the, the oscillators are not directly coupled through each other, but they are interacting via the common medium. And uh, in last couple of years, uh, many st uh, such uh, uh, studies are done by Ambika and his, her group also. So we have uh, considered that there are n number of oscillators, but they are not interacting with each other directly, but through the, the environment. So uh, you can see that there are many uh, examples in the, the nature also and in the biological and chemical system, like in the BZ reaction, the chemical species that diffuses between the autocatalytic beads and in metabolic oscillations, the common meta metabolites that diffuses between the cells that are the, the kind of examples for the environmental coupling. And in the synthetic bacteria, you have auto-inducer signaling molecules in the medium which are communicating <coughs> uh, between the, the cells. So, so you can see that uh, the, the previous studies al already shows that uh, if you have uh, this kind of uh, indirectly coupled oscillators, you have a, a synchronized state, you can have an antiphase uh, synchronization transition from in-phase to antiphase, uh, referred as a phase flip transition, and also as well as you can suppress the oscillations or uh, by some means you can revive the oscillations also. So uh, what we have considered is, again we have steward, considered the identical steward lambda oscillators and uh, they are connected with the, the, they have their own environment. So we have uh, not the one environment but uh, the n number of environments and they have in the absence of interaction and the environment decay with the decay coefficient gamma and the environment is interacting with the mean field uh, component and the, the individual oscillators are connected with the environment with the diffusive coupling and where alpha is the, the one factor which is the feedback term which controls the, the diffusion rate there. So here, uh, if you look at the, the two parameter space, the gamma, the, uh, the damping, uh, the decay rate of the, the, the environment and the coupling strength K. So you can see that the K is the, the coupling strength and gamma is the, the decay rate. So uh, here, uh, if you look at the, this parameter space, you can th see that there are uh, different uh, regions you can identify as an oscillatory state and amplitude death state and homogeneous steady state and the coexistence of homogeneous and inhomogeneous steady state. So these states are created because of the coupling. And at this point, you can see that uh, with gamma uh, less than some critical point, there's a uh, the transition directly from the, the oscillatory state to the homogeneous state, state. and this shows that uh, uh, there is an explosive dead transition and we have also uh, uh, work out the this bifurcation through XPP-OT and uh, we can see that uh, how this uh, the, 
the pitchfork bifurcation advances and resultant into the, the kind of explosive dead transition in the couple oscillators. So again, we have a uh, uh, look at the, the parameter space of different uh, parameters, the, uh, the decay constant gamma, the alpha, which is the param system parameter, and k is the coupling strength. You can see that they are uh, the regions of uh, this hysteresis area. And again, we have also calculated the backward transition point analytically, uh, which is by the, this, uh, the, this black line here. So this also shows that uh, uh, you have a uh, phenomena of this explosive death in the, uh, the environmentally coupled oscillators. So we again went on uh, looking at the uh, another possibilities. Okay, so now because we have already checked that uh, the the mean field coupled oscillators are giving you the uh, the this transition in, indirectly coupled oscillators are also giving you this kind of transitions. And other possibilities, if you look at the explore the network, where you have a both direct and indirect connections existing together. And uh, here we have look at the the two p numbers of neighbors. So we are uh, looking at the uh, the the number of neighbors uh, on the both side of the oscillator with i plus minus p where p is a, the parameter showing the how many neighbors are connected with the particular oscillators the and you have a, the local environment there with uh, the direct coupling between the oscillator and this so you can see that again uh, we could uh, see that uh, there is a the abrupt jump in the, the amplitude of the oscillators and this was for we have considered for different uh, number of neighbors in the network and here we have considered the network size 100 but our results are like independent of the network size I already mentioned. Then uh, we have uh, the coupling range we have defined R which is uh, the ratio of P over the N network size. And with this, the epsilon and K and R, we have worked out the, the hysteresis re region uh, before the, this um, oscillatory state, and which shows the transition to the, uh, this suppressed oscillation state. So we have considered the, this, uh, also the Van der Poel oscillator. And uh, we can see that here also, uh, uh, in the epsilon and k range, there for a particular value of p, there is a there's transition uh, from oscillated to non-oscillated state. So this is another parameter space with r going from zero to 0.5. We have considered, and here you can see that this transition is in the both uh, homogeneous and as well as in in homogeneous steady states which are well separated here and this, these states are uh, because of the uh, 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 interaction in the, uh, the oscillators and the, the, the condition of the stability of their states. So uh, we could see that uh, this kind of uh, transition uh, depends upon the, the environmental coupling strength, the architecture of the network and we have also considered this for the periodic uh, as well as chaotic systems. And uh, uh, for the, the coupling range also, we have could see that is observed for a particular uh, R value, which is greater than 0 0.08. Uh, so now, uh, when we were doing all this uh, work, so uh, recently there was a, a paper, so I would also like to mention here that uh, there was a recent study on the, the conjugate couple, because when you have a conjugate coupling, that also makes the, the, the symmetry in the, the system. and uh, there's a possibility that you can uh, get the uh, this kind of transition. So uh, I thought of mentioning this the uh, the recent work which is published uh, in PRE, and uh, what they have done is they have considered the the conjugate coupling of the this uh, Van der Poel oscillators. So you have a uh, and then you have a, this the 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 coupling is, uh, strength is k and dij counts for the degree of the ith oscillators so you have a, a number of oscillators connected to the 
the particular um, uh, ith oscillators so you you that gives you the the gij is you giving you the connection matrix so you can consider the all different possible uh, kind of network topologies here and uh, then the coupling is uh, between the dissimilar variables this is not with the xj minus xi but yj minus xi so you have a, this kind of conjugate coupling so here you can see that uh, with uh, with the continuation diagram if you uh, plot the amplitude as a function of the coupling strength for the different uh, network topologies and so he can you can see that you have a, this um, explosive death transition and the star network as well as nearest neighbor and all to all uh, networks so uh, if you look at the, the phase diagram for the uh, nearest neighbor network you can see that uh, in the 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 b is the this uh, the wonderful oscillator parameter and k is the coupling strength and here you can see that the system so uh, when you are increasing the coupling strength uh, system is going from oscillatory to the the death state and when for a particular uh, value of b which is uh, the critical value here the system goes to the the this od state and this transition is uh, through the is a discontinuous transition as compared to the uh, the transition uh, observed in the this oscillatory to the amplitude death state so uh, if you look at the the forward and backward transition points you can see that this backward transition point is exactly same in the all different network topologies and uh, it can also be worked out analytically so uh, you can see that this is independent of the network topology and uh, the forward transition point is close by uh, depending upon slightly dif uh, uh, slight variations are there depending upon the non type of network topology we have considered so uh, the damping coefficient which plays an important role uh, uh, giving rise to the either the uh, the st uh, the stabilization of the the un uh, unstable steady state of the uh, uncoupled system or uh, stabilization of the coupling dependent uh, term so here you can see that uh, this uh, backward transition point which is independent of network topology also the also independent of the network size here and then uh, i would like to sorry ha ah. yes yes but in some cases like here it is independent but uh, uh, in some cases like i'll tell you that here you can uh, in this the the forward transition point uh, depends upon the your um, the number of neighbors uh, so so uh, it is uh, it depends but uh, in some cases it is uh, uh, very close to that one so uh, what i would like to mention here is like uh, so basically uh, when we are looking at the the phase transitions so uh, Uh, in terms of phase transitions when you are uh, going from the oscillatory state to the non oscillatory state so so uh, or in terms of synchronization people have also studied the synchronization and percolation also so uh, you can classify into the the continuous or discontinuous transitions so when uh, system uh, in the system the, uh, the oscillations are suppressed because of the uh, the coupling and uh, the system goes to the Uh, or the one of the unstable steady state is stabilized because of the interaction or uh, uh, the newly uh, created steady state is stabilized so these are the two possibilities in the coupled system so either you can stabilize to the its own steady state or newly created steady state so whenever system is going to the to its own steady state because of the interaction the transition is continuous and whenever it is going to the 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 coupling dependent uh steady state so you are uh, showing you the discontinuous transition and that is reflected into the the if you if you are doing the bifurcation analysis you can see that the the first you have a uh, the uh, the hop bifurcation and um, so this i'll just mention that so yeah so conjugate coupling uh, is basically sub two variables 
X and Y. So your system has a two, uh, two uh, uh, state variables. Okay, and mostly what what you are doing is your the, the the identical variables interact with each with each other. Okay, or in case you are you would like to uh, uh, have an interaction between the the the, uh, the uh, dissimilar variables or another variable, any other variable. So if you have an n number of variables, so mostly uh, you uh, the system uh, you have an interaction like. You, when you are doing the, the like uh, electronic circuit, when you are doing those, so your current is uh, uh, from one circuit is added to the another one in terms of current. So current and voltage kind of uh, combination. If you ha if you are doing that, then you have to do the the proper uh, this normalization and all these things. But that is also possible in many cases, like in the pre uh, in the ecological systems also. If you have a pre predator model, so prey is interacting with prey, but whenever prey is interacting with predator of another uh, system. So you can say that there is an uh, interaction between the dissimilar variables. So any other variable which is, but you ha should have a, some physical, uh, like uh, uh, logical interpretation for that. So I'll just, uh, what I do is uh, before uh, finishing. So this is a one of the important uh, picture which I wanted to show that here whenever uh, uh, people are talking about the, the suppression of oscillations and that is because of the stabilization of the unstable steady state and that is happening through the, the this reverse hop bifurcation and then uh, some cases there is a pitchfork bifurcation also take place by uh, further increasing the coupling strength but whenever you can advance this pitchfork bifurcation and this home, uh, the hop bifurcation uh, is continuously going on here so there is a there is a region where you have a, the oscillatory state as well as a, the 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 steady state, which is uh, created because of the coupling, and that gives rise to the this abrupt jump in the amplitude of the oscillator, and uh, and uh, termed as an explosive death kind of transition. Normal form of the uh, okay that that uh, I have not but uh, that is not difficult. I think that can be worked out. It's not difficult because uh, it is it, it will be the the standard this uh, uh, this hop bifurcation uh, kind of uh, form. So, uh, so I would like to conclude here that <clears throat> the suppression of oscillations in the limit cycle oscillator and chaotic oscillator is studied from the phase transition point of view. The transition from oscillatory to death state or vice versa can be first order in the identical system of oscillators. And uh, this couple, uh, limit cycle and chaotic oscillator is studied with direct and indirect coupling with different network topology and the coupling form, like the direct diffusive coupling, the mean field coupling, and direct and indirect coupling, as well as the coupling between the dissimilar variables also was recently reported. And the, the backward transition point is analytically calculated uh, uh, through the linear stability analysis. And these uh, all the transitions are independent of the network size. And uh, uh, it was observed that this is because of the coexistence of the oscillatory state and coupling dependent homogeneous steady state. So I'd like to thank here. Questions. I have said something about these environmental coupling. Hmm. So your environment itself is just another set of coupled oscillators. Is that correct? Uh, it is another set of. Uh, uh, here we are assuming, considering that as a decaying uh, linear system. So we are considering the environment as a linearly decaying system. But uh, we can also uh, consider environment as a, another oscillator, which can be identical or non-identical oscillators. So the, like uh, for the Lorentz, Rossler can be environment or uh, two dimensional. So the environment can be. So we have considered the the one dimensional environment, which is the linearly decaying environment. But we can also consider the higher dimensional, identical or non-identical environments. Hmm. Equal to two x minus y. Y dot equal to something something. I can have x y going to zero. So essentially, you are increasing dimensionality of system, okay, by one. 
hmm. and somehow uh, and, uh, decreasing the overall eigen values uh, i mean uh, in some way yeah so yeah i mean that so, uh, yeah that is what they are doing yeah ah so i got your point so uh, my comment on that is that uh, when we what i was uh, considering here is a linearly decaying environment so that is increasing the dimension by the system n to n plus 1 and in the limit so if i consider that limit uh, the environment is going to zero then can i can replace that by some constant and that can be added into the uh, my uh, the original system and i can uh, like uh, have a uh, going back to the same n dimensional system by adding some constant so basically it is a kind of shift there so in the limit like i consider that environment is going to zero or some constant value then the i have checked I, I, we can do that and finally i have checked the 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 dynamics of environment also that is going to some constant value and that is that is helping the, the is is a, basically you can see that if i uh, get rid of the environment system is going to, so it is kind of giving the system a bias okay and that is uh, the the one region uh, for uh, going from this uh, this uh, the uh, is a kind of uh, uh, you are breaking the symmetry of the system and then the coupling dependent uh, the steady state are not the the equilibrium point of the uncoupled system because in some some cases uh, like in the diffusive coupling uh, like if i do the the diffusive coupling uh, stuart landa oscillator so coupled system uh, equilibrium points are identical to the uncoupled uh, stuart landa oscillator so in that case i will always Uh, ending up to the which is termed as a amplitude death state or to the going to the the but here it is uh, it is basically uh, in long uh, like at this time going t going to infinity limit if you consider that environment is constant so it is kind of giving the bias on